I'm going to walk you through the website and then we're going to solve a challenge together. Hello ethical hackers and bug bounty hunters. Today I share with you another great hacking platform for bug bounty hunters which mimics a real bug bounty program. Brought to you by no other than the awesome Z Shanov, who is a famous bug bounty hunter. So let's get started. If you saw my previous video that covered CTF challenge, I talked about how the owner of this website is providing high quality challenges that mimic a bug bounty target, as you can read here. I felt like there weren't any realistic hacking challenges out there that felt like a real website that had realistic vulnerabilities that you would find in real world. So a bunch of real keywords in the same sentence. The owner of the website provides challenges from his own experience of web development, pen testing, or write-ups from places like HackerOne. And Bug Bounty Hunter is somewhat the same, except that it offers free challenges and a membership subscription. The website focuses on web application hacking and provides realistic challenges that fall into the beginner or level up categories. I'm going to walk you through the website and then we're going to solve a challenge together. The first section I want to talk about is the learning to hack area. This is where you get to discover the different security vulnerabilities regarding web applications. So you can find cross-site scripting, CSERF, open redirects, etc. Most of these are covered in the OWASP top 10 playlist, which is available on this YouTube channel. So if you're not really familiar with web application vulnerabilities, this is a great start for you. And what I like about the website is that in the left-hand side, there's a section for useful payloads. It allows you to copy payloads and paste them into user inputs that you're trying to test manually. And it also gives you some inspiration. For example, this is a cross-site scripting payload which uses URL encoding to bypass some filters. This one is trying to break up the JavaScript keyword using the carriage return line feed characters, etc. I also like the tips from Zishono. So for example, for cross-site scripting, you have test every parameter slash header with a blind cross-site scripting payload. Of course, you have no idea how the backend is handling the user input. So you can get hits back to your server, even though an internal application is not exposed publicly. And that's because your user input ended up in the internal application from the public application. You can use tools such as XSS Hunter to do that. The other part that I really like about this section is the free web application challenges. And they are categorized into newcomer challenges, which means easy challenges, and then level up your hacking challenges. We are going to go back into this section later when we try to solve a challenge. And then you have the Zishano's playground, which you can access also from the first section. And that's a somewhat demo version of the Barker application, which is available for members. And you can access this demo application right here. It's publicly available and you can start hacking it right now. Again, it's important to honor the rules of the owner. That means you should not use any automated scanners so that you avoid overwhelming the server. You should avoid any brute force, any directories or file enumeration. All your tests should be done manually and subdomains are not in scope. These challenges are somewhat focused on individual web application security vulnerabilities rather than recon and brute force, etc. So I, I think that this, this is one of the main differences between bugbountyhunter.com and ctfchallenge.co.uk in the sense that the latter allows you to at least do some recon enumeration and some brute force. However, Bug Bounty Hunter focuses on the techniques and the methodology you can apply when you focus on one specific web application. The second section in bugbountyhunter.com is practice like a pro, which is the paid feature of the website. You have to enroll in, it in a subscription in order to become a member and gain access to the Barker web application, as you can see here, which contains yet more challenges and allows you to send your reports to Sean and he himself 
at least at the moment, will triage your reports. You will have access to Z. Shono's methodology that he follows in order to find bug bounties when he is doing bug bounty hunting. You can check out a, an explanation of the member section in the video that he published. Right now, it's not available, it's not possible to enroll just yet, but when the membership area is open again, you can sign up and log in in this form. You can follow the news about the platform using the Twitter account Bug Bounty Hunter. As you can see, it seems that the owner is working on some major updates for the platform, so it should be exciting when it's launched back. So let's choose a challenge right here. Let's start with the first one in the first category. Let's click on Begin Challenge, and we are redirected to this URL which return an auth token. Now from the assignment, we learn that the application doesn't prevent an attacker from obtaining this authentication token. Our objective is to steal that token. So this is our auth token. And if an attacker somehow is able to exfiltrate this, it means that he basically has access to my account. This challenge is tagged as cross origin resource sharing. And if you bought my book that I re recently published, actually, it's easier to just go to the Shono account and show you the cover. He has just bought it, and I'm so thankful and humbled by that. Anyway, so inside the book, I talk about Anna tries to find ways to overcome her limits and become a successful hunter. And... At one point, she came across a web application which was vulnerable to cross-origin resource sharing. I don't want to spoil the story for you, but it was a game changer to find that bug. And I let you discover that in the book. You can grab it right now. It's on Amazon and you can find the link in the description box. So if I inspect the element and refresh the page, you can see that we have a GET request which returns the authentication token. Firefox has a neat feature which allows you to basically edit and resend the request. So instead of using burp in this case, I'm just going to edit and resend. And you can see in the request headers, it's just a plain text content. So what I can do here is add a special header called origin. What this does is it allows the backend to decide if it should talk or receive requests from different domains other than www.bugbountytraining.com. This is a typical way to bounce information back and forth between different domains because otherwise the same origin policy that is implemented in every web browser would prevent such behavior. So let's enter a random domain and see if the backend accepts such domains. When we send, we get a 200 response. And in the response headers, we don't see anything that hints that the backend server is honoring our origin header. Maybe there is a whitelist or a blacklist and the backend only chooses certain domains. What if I change the origin header to something that resembles to www.bugbountytraining.com. Maybe I can add a dot something and send it. And in the response, we we'll still see no special headers returned back. Let's try once more. In this case, I'm going to add the protocol. The definition of an origin is the protocol the fully qualified domain name and the port. So if we send that, do you notice any new headers? Yep, they are at the beginning. Access control allow credentials, true, and access control allow origin. This is the same value that we entered in the origin header. Whenever you find this, it means that the web application is vulnerable. How it is vulnerable? Well, let me edit that and instead of this random gibberish, I can put the hackerish.com. Do you see where this is going? 
I can configure a wildcard DNS resolution. So whenever I have in the subdomain part, it will resolve to the hackerish.com. So I can host my own malicious web page on the hackerish.com, which will steal the authentication token. Let me show you how. First of all, I'm just going to make it HTTP and see if I can use HTTP protocol. No, it's not working like that. So I have to honor two things. The first one is to use HTTPS. And the second one is to preserve the fully qualified domain name www.bagontitraining.com in order for the exploit to work. Just to show you a neat feature in Burp Professional. So I can right click engagement tools and then generate CSERF proof of concept. And from there, I go to options and then cross domain XML HTTP request and regenerate. As you can see, we have a piece of JavaScript code which will declare a new H XML HTTP request object and open the vulnerable web application with the credentials set to true, which means that the victim's cookies will be sent along with the request and a body in case we have one. What I can do now is just copy this and paste it on a page which we can send to the victim. And I'm just going to add some modification to the code. So we don't need this part for the body because we don't have one. Remove the argument for the send method. So once we send it, JavaScript allows us to catch the callback using the onReady state change method. And when the response is 200, we can print the response text. Otherwise, we just print an error. All right, let's save this file. Let's name it exploit. And let's open it in our web browser. As you can see, we have the button submit request. If we see the page source, there we have our JavaScript code. Because this page is hosted on a local file, it wouldn't work. Let's verify that. Once we submit the request, a request which has been sent to our target, bugbountytraining.com, with the origin set to null. And as you guessed it, we don't have the two headers which allow the web browser execute JavaScript against the backend. So what we need to do now is host this web page on a HTTPS server because we can't use a plain HTTP server. So I'm going to use a Docker image which comes with a HTTPS Nginx server. And before that, I'm just going to change the domain name to www.bugbountytraining.com dot blah dot co and then I'm going to choose 443 we're going to mount the current directory to slash opt slash ww so hopefully this will give us a server that we can use to exploit our victim I made a typo here I should add a backslash I'm going to do a mapping with my destination server so that I can run it locally do that, you just need to change the file etc hosts. I'm going to move the exploit.html to my current directory and then run the Docker container. And now when I go to that web page, I am prompted with a warning because that's just a self-signed certificate. I'm going to accept the risk and continue. So now when I go to slash exploit.html, I see the same web page. If I inspect the element now and go to network, if I submit that request, lo and behold, you have the two magic headers popping up. This means that we were able to, as you can see here, exfiltrate the authentication token. Now, we've just printed that in the, into the console, but we can exfiltrate it elsewhere. Let's use a webhook to do that. One of the websites that provide webhooks is webhook.site. Whenever we send a request to this URL, we will grab everything related to the client. So if I do a curl command, automatically I receive a request here. We can use the same thing in our exploit. To do that, I'm going to exec into the running Docker container and run bash. Now if I go to opt ww, I shall see the file exploit.html. When I try to edit it, Instead of doing a console log, I can do something like a redirection. 
And here I'm going to use the same webhook I have. And then I can maybe add a parameter. Let's call it token equals and then concatenate our response text. Else we will just print error in the console. All right, let's try to refresh our page. Go to exploit.html and click on submit request. As you can see, we have a new request which exfiltrates the JSON object which contains the auth token. Imagine that this website is hosted on blah.co. An attacker can share this normal web page to the users and whenever the victim visits this web page and clicks on that button or we can automate that by just grabbing that form and sending it using JavaScript. The exploit in this case would exfiltrate the data to the attacker's controlled website and this data contains the authentication token. Now this is definitely a exciting challenge because we needed to first bypass this backend parser by appending our own domain name and then we needed to set up an HTTPS server in order for the exploit to work. So even though this is just a simple challenge, it carries a lot of tips and tricks. And this is normal because, you know, Sean is a really skilled bug bounty hunter and it makes sense to have such kind of challenges. So I highly recommend you give them a try. And you can find the solution below and I advise you not to jump right to it. First, try to exploit the challenge yourself and then go back to the solution. So I really hope that you give this awesome platform a try. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other bug bounty like platforms which help you experiment with security vulnerabilities and I would be happy to do a review about it. If you found this content helpful, make sure to like, comment and subscribe to this channel so that you get updates whenever I publish a new video on ethical hacking and bug bounty hunting. If you're new to hacking and want to learn the basics, check out the free OWASP Top 10 Theory and Hands-on Training on thehackerish.com and apply your knowledge on the lab which supports it. If you enjoy learning with videos, I invite you to watch the OWASP Top 10 YouTube playlist. However, I encourage you to first try to solve the lab exercises so that you don't spoil them. Don't forget that there are supporting blog posts for most of the videos you watch on this YouTube channel. I also encourage you to subscribe to the Friday newsletter on thehackerish.com to gain some new hacking knowledge at the end of the week. If you enjoy listening while doing other things at the same time, check out the Hack for Fun and Profit podcast, link in the description box. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.